it's like Christopher did, right? We assigned an ID mm -hmm. to that particular object so that we could interact with it down here in our code. And this little simple uh, set of code just goes out and uh, and declares a variable to get the context of that object. Mm -hmm. And then once we do that, we're able to use that, that uh, object and begin applying some methods. In yep. this case, we're going to go out and get a fill style method. Mm -hmm. Fill a rectangle with blue, right? Real simple. <laughs> the fill rectangle uh, 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 method takes four attributes. It's going to take the x, y position on the screen, and then also the width and the height. And that's okay. just going to define, define the space. Fill it with blue. Perfect. There's a great real-world example that I want to show you that uses HTML5 and manipulates some graphics okay. interactively. Let's see. And that's Cut the Rope. If you have not yeah. seen this great, <laughs> you're laughing. You must have played Cut the Rope before. I, everybody's played Cut the Rope. Everybody's Absolutely. played the Cut the Rope. Hey, you know, if you right-click and view the source, hey, look. This whole thing is written in HTML5. So awesome. it's really okay. cool now that you're learning about HTML5 is to go out and explore websites that you mm -hmm. use a lot and see how they're written. So this is an example of one. And uh, it has a very active and interactive graphical interface. Right. It's all done using JavaScript and HTML5. So yeah, Excellent. really cool real world example. Of that, let's go look at an example of our own, though, uh, okay. working with graphics in JavaScript. I'm going to make it easy on you watching, and also on me, rather than typing in the code. There is a <laughs> great sample out on MSDN, Microsoft site. We can actually go to it. Provides us with a little bit more information for you to read up on the Canvas object, and then also gives you some code to copy and paste. Yep. We love that. So I'm going to go ahead and link out, and this link will be provided to you. Or you can just pause the video if you want right now, go out to MSDN site, and if you switch back to my slide, you can uh, pick up the, uh, the page that you're going to be searching for on MSDN to grab this particular little video. I'm going to go ahead and link out now. Give that just a second. There yeah, we go. And maximize that. You see, it'll take us to some information about the Canvas element. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's got just kind of everything that you might want about yeah. that Canvas object. It's I like nice it. to know about the methods and the events that mm -hmm. are available, but what we're really interested in is the code example down here at the bottom. Okay. And up in the upper right hand corner, ah, ah copy. Copy. <laughs> hey. I love it. So we're going to copy that, close that out. I'll uh, open up. My web matrix. There we go. We'll do a HTML empty site next. And then I'm just going to simply replace what is in here with the old control V, and there's my code. Voila. I do want to point out since we're following up with Christopher's demonstration, mm -hmm. one of the cool features that Web Matrix has that I really love is uh, after you've used Web Matrix and you feel like maybe you want to move on to Visual Studio, you can port over your code directly from a web matrix. So if you go back to my screen, you can see up here there's an oh, okay. option, yeah, to just launch Visual Studio right then and there and uh, go in because it is a great tool. But uh, you know there may some, be some other features that you want to explore in Visual Studio. That's so no, that's there. I love it. Let's just take a look and see what we're doing here. We are just this in this case we're actually writing out three rectangles, right? Okay. And uh, we're going to fill one with red. Then we're going to do a, um, a, hey, and notice we're doing the RGBA. We're using that alpha channel. Mm -hmm. So two of our rectangles here, this one and this one, are actually going to have that transparency effect. So we're going to do a red, green, and a blue. One of the things that you notice is that uh, the height and the width are the same. We're actually creating squares, right? Right. But notice we're actually using the fill rectangle. There's really not a, a, a rectangle. A square is a rectangle, right? <laughs> so there's no special square uh, method. You're just yep. going to call the fill rectangle to I remember that. that from geometry. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and run it and just see what happens and how it looks. And voila, there we've got our One, pretty, two, three, and yeah, yeah I love the that, transparency that little effect. there. Yep. So this is a great little sample for you to just go out, copy the code, and mm -hmm. play around with. I do want to point out one little caveat. I want to save our users a lot of 
headache and a lot of time, something that I had to learn the hard way. It's very important to uh, do these steps in the correct order. <laughs> yeah. And yep. again, like what uh, Christopher was mentioning earlier, you don't always get a warning, but things just don't work the way that <laughs> it's supposed to. Yep. So if we go back to my screen, I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. Uh, I have to specify the fill style first before yep. I try to fill it, right? You've got to say what you want to fill it first, right? Right. If I reverse these orders, let me just stick Seems this innocuous up. enough. You know, it just doesn't seem like it would be that big of a yeah. deal, right? But if I run this, ah, Whoa. I get just the default black color. So just That's, be aware of that. Yeah. I want to save you a little pain and misery. And uh, <laughs> just to know that, yeah, you've got to actually specify those yep. in the right order. Okay. And that's it. Hey, not really a whole lot of code no. to work with the graphic object. And, of yeah. course, again, we mentioned that uh, the the... The graphic object can be rather complex. Mm -hmm. uh, you can we, we saw an example, a real world example of cut the rope. You're not expected to have written an application like cut the rope for this level, but understand what's going on behind the scenes. Know that the canvas object is going to be manipulated with JavaScript and a few of the methods and events available for you to do so. All right. Let's cool. Back to our screen here. While that's loading, I'm just going to go in and play Cut the Rope. Oh, come on. <laughs> you want to listen to Touch Interface here? <laughs> yeah, so we're going <laughs> to... We're, we're back on my screen now. Okay, Christopher. There we go. Anyway, all right. <laughs> It is. It's addictive. Be, be oh, yeah. warned. If you haven't <laughs> downloaded the app, yep. it's addictive. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the last thing that we want to cover is talking a little bit about designing for touch-enabled devices. So we want to make sure that you are somewhat uh, comfortable with with how to how to develop. Yeah, how to. Develop. I'll put my phone back away now. <laughs> Here we have a table of some basic gestures and touches that you need to be familiar with. Again, it's not inclusive, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for for this level of exam. You need mm -hmm. to be com comfortable with the touches that are available and out there. I think it might help if we actually look at this slide. Yeah, that which visually kind of demonstrates some of the differences. You know, the tap and the double tap, of course, that's rather self explanatory. And the drag and the flick. Okay, the drag is, of course, put your finger down, hold it down. Mm -hmm across the entire device and then lift it up. The flick is more of just a little swipe across the okay. screen or the device. See, yeah. I'm, I, I actually am, in fact, sitting here kind of just doing I this with that. my, with my yeah. finger. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the so visual yeah, really does like, help yeah. Absolutely. try to put yep. it into perspective. Okay. So you should be familiar. And again, I think most of our audience has probably used uh, a mobile device, a touch-enabled device. So these should be pretty straightforward Don't for you. Don't make me break you. out my phone again. No. <laughs> oh. Sorry, there we go. What I do want to point out is you should be familiar with the methods that mm -hmm. are available with the touch events, excuse me, events. And uh, there are three of them, touch start, touch move, and touch end. There is a fourth one, a touch cancel. But for the most part, these are the three that we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. They actually happen in this order. Touch okay. start begins when the user plus presses the device, finger down, okay. then the movement. Touch end occurs when the fig finger is lifted or fingers lifted off of the device. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, just have a basic understanding about those methods, know what they are, and know when they occur. Here's a simple little example if we look at our screen of some code. So as the developer, we have to respond mm -hmm. to those events when they occur. And here's an example of how we're going to do that. We're simply going to add an event listener to the document object. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do something when okay. that event occurs. In this case, we're actually listening for the touch start event okay. to occur. And when that occurs, we're going to do something. In this case, we're just simply going to write out to an alert box, uh, pass in the uh, length property. Okay. Seems Seems pretty Stay straightforward. Yeah. By the way, the length property just simply returns, believe it or not, the number of fingers that have been touched on the device. Okay. So, that's ah, simple. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the other thing that you want to be aware of is that uh, the touch events have an associated mouse event too. And this is really helpful to know if you're debugging your application. Mm -hmm. You may not actually be debugging on a touch enabled device. 
no worries. If you look at my slide, I'll demonstrate to you that each uh, yeah, okay. each touch event has an associated mouse down event. So you can test your app just by testing the associated mouse event. But of course you do eventually want to move to a, a touch device before you actually get it out there, yeah. right? But, but it's just good to know uh, that there is an associated event. Also that we are in a touch enabled world, right, mm -hmm. with devices, but we cannot ignore the mouse. We right. still have to develop for both touch and mouse. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've got a great resource here on the slide for you that will give you a little bit more detailed information about touch and mouse and mm -hmm. how they're associated with one another. You'll want to take the time to review this as, as preparation yeah. for the exam. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, that's it. JavaScript, again, in a <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> so what we saw there was uh, kind of the, the little fundamentals, just simply a, hey, this is how we display things. Right. Then we took a look at how we could go in, update the interface, interact with the user. Right. Uh, we took a look at how we could create our own function so we can control when something is going to happen. Talked uh, about how to create an external file, how to bring that back in. Right. Talked a bit about how to respond to events. Talked a little bit about both touch as well as, you know, a user clicking on a, on a mouse button. And then also about how to do graphics. Graphics is fun. It, yeah. it, it is. It can be complicated, but as you saw from our example, you can do a lot of Fun things with just a few lines of code, Exactly, right? yeah. So uh, what do you say we uh, take a break, and then let's come on back and uh, really kind of take a look at a last uh, handful of like odds and ends, managing state, the page lifecycle, how to remember things when the user you know, leaves and comes back and, and things like that. So let's take a break, and, uh, and then we'll come on back. Sounds great. All right. <laughs> All right, welcome back to uh, the MVA on preparing for the MTA exam. Uh, a lot of M's in that. Yep. Uh, 98375 uh, HTML5 Application Development Fundamentals. Uh, I'm still very pleased to be joined here by uh, Rachel Jones. Good Again, I am uh, Christopher Harrison. And uh, up until now, what we've seen is the, the three main pillars of doing HTML5 application development, which is, well, HTML, right. interestingly enough, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. Well, one of the things that we hinted at in the JavaScript module is that there's certainly a bit more power inside of JavaScript that's available. And we also need to worry about things beyond just simply you know, making the user interface work. Like, what happens when the user closes their browser? And comes back, or how about you know dealing with you know things like making sure that data hasn't been played around with, and 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 so forth. Well, that's exactly what we want to talk about in uh, in this module when it comes to managing the application uh, lifecycle. So, Rachel, what do you know about managing the lifecycle? Let's just jump right into there it. There we talk go. About that yeah, yeah. We as a developers have to take care of the life cycle, and we'll yep. talk a little bit about why that is and and what that actually means. So we'll look at this thing called managing the state. Mm -hmm. What is state? We'll cover that. We have created our HTML, as you mentioned. We've done the CSS. Yep. We've written the JavaScript. Now, and we've tested it. Got we've to tested test it. it yep, to bug yep, it. Yep. We are ready to deploy it. Yes. Send it out. And of course, now, a popular way to distribute your application is through a store. So we'll yeah. look at some requirements to do that. How to package it up for the store, and then some requirements that are going to be needed. All right. Let's talk a little bit about this thing called state yes. and, and what that actually means when yep. we say manage the state. I think yeah. we need to back up a little bit, right, and talk a little bit about first, why do we right. need to manage state and Absolutely. what state is. Although if you back up, that's going to mess up the camera angle. Yeah, so okay. just stay where you stay are. Forward. Yeah, okay. all right. <laughs> when we are creating an HTML5 application, of course, our application is going to be run on the client side. As mm -hmm. we said, it's going to be rendered in a browser. Right. Browsers use a communication protocol called mm -hmm. HTTP, right? Yep. And uh, it is a type of communication that doesn't remember from one call to the next. Right. Same, right? Yep. So we, as the developers, if we mm -hmm. want to remember information or data from one call to the next, we are responsible for handling that. Right, right. Yeah. So I kind of like to think of it, uh, the, the, the classic movie, Fifty First Dates. Do you remember that one? Okay, I, did, I actually didn't see that <laughs> oh, one. <laughs> with, it's with Adam Sandler and uh, Drew Barrymore. So okay. 
she uh, has a memory issue, and every morning she wakes up, and they have to reboot her memory. So <laughs> that's how I kind of think about okay, this, all right. this idea of state and managing memory. So I like it. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll look at go right into that and look at some ways that we can manage mm -hmm. that as as a developer. A lot of different ways.